Good evening, we're back with more Lord of the Rings LCG, and tonight is a storm on Cobus Haven on Nightmare Difficulty. This is another sailing quest, and it's a pretty difficult sailing quest. I had some problems with it. I think it's the hardest of the sailing quests, at least on Nightmare, on nightmare Mode. Really need to get off to a strong start, because there's a lot of Nightmare ships that can come out of the encounter deck for the card that you have to guard the objective that can really be a problem. In this case we get a scouting ship which is only a problem if we fail a, scale, a sailing check because if you get off course then the scouting ship gets minus 15 engagement cost and both of those would engage me in the same turn and that would be a big problem so very important to get the sailing checks Starting out with the usual fleet, and I'll see what I can do about actually remembering Narlenya's discount. I usually don't, but in this case I do. And first ally is just going to be one cost thanks to Narlenya. The second ship. So I've got good harvest to help smooth out this resource curve. Not resource curve, but smooth out the lack of availability of lore resources to play the five lore allies I have in my hand. I'll be able to get most of them out with the assistance of a good harvest. I'll have to let go of one Hunter of Lamadon. It's a pretty weak start in terms of my questing power. So we're gonna do the sailing check. Dream Chaser counts for two and have another two, so a total of four. It's one less than I'd usually like to get, but we do get the one wheel required. And we're back on course. So now I can quest and not gonna have a lot of willpower available, so I'm gonna need to use Narlenya here. So we're questing for nine against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. In the staging area, the location gets plus two because there's a guarded objective. Go ahead, otherwise that's a relatively mild encounter card, and we'll go ahead and move to it right away. It's important to get a relatively mild card guarding the objective to start the game, and important to get a relatively mild encounter card in the first turn, or this quest can get ugly very quickly. So got out Steward of Gondor, which is a great draw. I'm going to heed the dream looking for Ether Swordsman, and I don't find it, unfortunately. Could have also played Faramir using Narlenia, Narlenia's discount if I had found it. I don't, but I do grab it. the second heed the dream once again, digging for Ether Swordsman, and if I had remembered that Narlenya provides a discount, I would have grabbed Faramir. But as usual, I did not remember, and so I got the vastly inferior Envoy of Pelar gear. Bit of a misplay there. Now I'm figuring out whether I had paid for everything correctly or not. And I come to the to the conclusion that the resources were correct, but that I and that I can't afford Faramir, which was the wrong conclusion. But I very good tail and I get Faramir, but that's only because I forgot to shuffle the deck, and I'm gonna realize that in just a moment. After using Heed the Dream I should have shuffled the deck, which I forgot to do, so I do that now, and then we'll very good tail. Bit unfortunate, because I would have liked to have, well, it's not unfortunate, but I would have liked to have Faramir, but I think he's supposed to shuffle the deck after you heed the dream. So, now we can very good tail. Hopefully there'll be an Ether Swordsman, or Faramir would be acceptable. We'll see. So, one Ether Swordsman, eh, okay, good enough. That actually, I think, is worth exhausting two characters for. It is so valuable and so important to get a lot of willpower going in this quest early. 
So we do the sailing check and there's the one wheel that's needed. So back on course, which is very, very important so that we don't engage two scouting ships at once along with the corresponding Corsair cards. And I've got enough willpower now that I don't think I'll be in any danger of taking additional threat. I have to reveal the top card of the Corsair deck and put it into play engaged with me. So it's a Umbar Captain. No Knights of the Swan yet, so my combat ability is limited. We're able to clear the location and make two progress on the quest, and the attack will go on Denethor. Hopefully it won't kill him, but it does. Plus one shadow card, plus one attack from the shadow card. Gives the Umbar Captain six attack, and that will kill Denethor. Denethor dying is not a big deal when Steward of Gondor is out. So I did remember to discount Envoy of Pelargear there, I think. And then I pay for the Knight of the Swan, which is a very good draw in this situation. And we're going to do the sailing check once more for just four, and we do get it with three wheels. Feels a little risky each time I do a sailing check with just four characters. I typically like to use, or just four encounter cards, I would typically like to see five to feel confident and even then sometimes you only see one wheel and sometimes only on the last card. I think the sailing checks are a little more difficult in the nightmare mode. In fact I'd be surprised if they weren't. So I'm gonna quest for nine and I'll have some characters left over to do combat and it's a seawall that's something I'm happy to see it's pretty mild. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I do take two threat. Don't want to take any more threat or, or I'll where I will be engaging the scouting ships before I'm ready. And I can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just enough attack power to take out the Umbar Captain. Hopefully I'll be able to continue getting set up and then be able to defeat the scouting ships and the boarding parties. Got Faramir there, that's very good. Another warrior of Losternok, that's good too, and I can, very good tail. Hopefully another Ether Swordsman. There is another Ether Swordsman and another Knight of the Swan, that's a very good, very good tail. And feeling much more confident about my chances in this quest now, so I'm going to do the sailing check for five. We do get a Broken Rudder, which is a card you have to put on a ship that's committed to the sailing test. And it's going to deal damage to characters after a sailing test unless you discard it from the ship by exhausting three characters. So I'm going to go ahead and quest for 11. And it's going to be another one of these bring a card in from the Umbar deck. And the card is a Cunning Pirate, and he requires me to discard an attachment, which is going to be Steward of Gondor. He gets two resources for that. It's ripped Steward of Gondor, but it did its job. And we'll be able to clear the seawall here. I'm questing lightly, because I don't want to proceed out of Phase 1 until I have cleared the staging area of some of these ships. I'm not required to. There's nothing pressuring me to proceed past phase one. So the attack does one damage to the hunter of Lamadon. Actually I think that should have been... no that's right one damage. And do I have three characters available to get rid of the broken rudder? Not at the moment but hopefully now. So I'm thinking about what I want to do with this. I'm gonna, instead of using the Aaron Rider to exhaust, or to transfer a resource, I'm gonna use it to get rid of the Broken Rudder. You have to exhaust three characters in order to do this. 
and we're gonna pass the sailing test so we stay on course and with Faramir and two Ether Swordsmen I've got some questing power now so I will just quest for 11 and it's gonna be a siege ship which provides two archery and I'll go ahead and deal with that right away I think Now we'll engage the scouting ship instead. And boarding one means one card off the Corsair deck engaged with me. But with two Knights of the Swan on the table, I should be able to deal with both the ship and the sailor. He doesn't really do much except that he allows the ship that's engaged to provide its threat to the staging area. So no damage on four long. Should have enough damage for both of these enemies that are engaged with me. So the docks of Dole Amroth are now free and they are going to provide a benefit which is that it heals a ship for two each round although at the moment it will immediately get guarded by the siege ship which has a, an ability that it can guard any unclaimed objectives. I think it's at the end of the quest phase. Not really a concern though because I don't have any damage on my ships at the moment. I'm just thinking about which characters I want to exhaust for the sailing check. Do get the wheel so we stay on course. And we'll go ahead and quest lightly once again. And it'll be another scouting ship so there's going to be four ships in the staging area and I'm now at 35 threats so I've got to engage two of them. So two ships and two boarding cards. And I'm at nine progress on the quest so pretty close to advancing. Definitely want to take these enemies out before I do. The raid leader is going to steal a resource. Vicious Marauder would get resources if I had any cards in hand but I don't. And that's going to bring the top card of the Corsair deck into play engage with me. So that is a formidable amount of enemies engaged. Narlenia defends successfully, but now I need to take an undefended attack, and that's going to deal 5 damage. I can't actually do that where I, what I just did, healing the 2 damage, because the objective should be guarded by the seed ship. But that's not going to have any impact on the game. The ships don't really come close to dying. So just a matter of dealing with the attacks and then I can deal my damage in return and make a dent in these enemies. Should take out one of the ships so they're not doing any more undefended attacks. And I also owe archery damage from the seed ship, but I have plenty of places to put it. So, there goes one of the ships, and I've still got some guys left. I can take out probably one more enemy. Three, four, five, six, seven. I could take out the vicious marauder. And 
there I'm placing the archery damage that I forgot to place. Doesn't really matter where it goes to be honest. With Outlands, archery damage generally isn't much concern. With Onphalos Herdsman, you have so many places to put it that it doesn't present much challenge. With only four cards left in the deck, there is not going to be much change in the board state for a while. I'll have to make do with what I got. I, I, I do change my mind about playing the Envoy of Pelagri here. I'd rather use the resources on Men of the West and getting the two Outlands allies that I have in the discard pile out. So we'll do the sailing check. And we get it on the last card. Well, that's why I like to go with five. And once again, I shouldn't have been able to heal that damage. And at this point, I realize it. I put the damage back on the Dream Chaser, and the Siege Ship is now guarding it as it should have been. Now I'm thinking about how I could prevent moving into phase two, but I decide it's probably not possible. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It got a very innocuous encounter card there, which was fortunate. So we got to bring another ship enemy into the staging area. If any objectives had been unguarded, they would be guarded. Although in the nightmare mode, the Raider flagship cannot guard an objective. So I decide that a siege ship is relatively mild as far as enemies go because it doesn't have a boarding trait, so it doesn't bring additional enemies. So I need 16 progress to advance in phase two, though we can't advance while an objective is guarded, so I shouldn't engage the siege ship that is not guarding an objective, I should engage the one that is, and I realize that in just a moment and make the adjustment. Going to move to the Starlit Sea. There's no penalty for that while you're on course. And I do have four archery damage to deal with, but plenty of places to put it with three on Philos Herdsman out and many undamaged Outlands allies. The Naralenya is going to take an undefended attack for seven. So, actually it's good that I have the objective which heals ships as soon as I free it. And as I said, I realize in just a moment that I should have engaged the seed ship that's guarding the objective, though I think I decide not to correct that mistake as it's been a little while since I made it. So we'll just take out the ship that's not guarding an objective. That was a misplay. Just didn't think about it enough. But no problem. Probably delays the game by one round. Because I could have moved on from phase two this round if I had played it differently. I can't move on until after the objective has been freed. So I got a full board now with a couple of chump blockers in addition. Gonna do the sailing check for five. And we do pass, but there is gonna be another broken rudder. Requiring three characters exhausted to fix it, but no problem. I've got plenty of characters to do that now. So I'm gonna quest for 14 and actually shouldn't have gotten an umbar captain at this point because the umbar enemies from the boarding deck are supposed to go into their own discard pile and that one got shuffled back into the encounter deck when the encounter deck ran out 
So it actually should have been another card, and I realized that later, and I deal the card, and it's actually another enemy with the exact same attack value, so would have had no effect on the game. Of course, the encounter card likely would have been something different, but since I do the encounter card later instead of now, boarding party it would have been, I guess, but, you know, given my board state, there's uh, not going to be... Actually, it'd end up being even, right? Because I would have engaged the Umbar Captain instead or some something like it, but really no problem at this point in the game. But uh, yeah, for what it's worth, the Umbar Captain should have gone into his own discard pile, not into the main discard pile. As the boarding deck enemies have a boarding deck discard pile. I don't know why I decided to leave that enemy in the staging area instead of engaging him. Would have been relatively simple to take him out. I think I was just being lazy at this point. Raider Flagship is a tough ship to take out because only ship objectives can be declared as, an at as attackers. My opinion, the only practical way to do that in single player, since the Dream Chaser only attacks for four and you need one ship to defend and one to attack, it would take like 18 turns to take out the Raider flagship. Unless you can bring those Dole Amroth warships that are out of play into play using one of the objectives, but since in Nightmare Mode you don't get to choose which objective you start with, you do in Normal Mode, but in Nightmare Mode it's random. It's only a 1 in 6 chance that you get the one that allows you to bring warships into play. Otherwise you have to wait for it to come from the encounter deck and that could take a long time. So killing the raider flagship is not a practical objective in solo play in nightmare mode in my opinion. And in nightmare mode while any players engage with raider flagship and we will be in phase 3. You can only make 5 progress per round, and you need to make 5 progress plus 5 progress per ship objective, so it's basically one turn, not per ship objective, per ship in play, so it's basically one turn of questing for each ship you have in play. Or you can kill the Raider flagship, which as I said, we can't really do in solo play, owing to the fact that we only have two ships and they don't attack for enough to take out the Raider flagship unless we play for a very long time, in which case with this deck we would thread out before killing it. Unless we get lucky with the objective and get the one that allows us to bring Dole Amroth warships into play and then it's more doable. I believe when I played this on normal difficulty I chose the objective at the start of the game which would allow me to do that and that made the task of killing the Raider flagship much more manageable. The Raider flagship brings an extra card off the boarding deck at the end of the encounter phase, so we're gonna be engaging extra enemies, and there's one from the shadow card as well. Attacking enemy gets plus one attack for each guarded objective. There aren't any. No problem. It's going to bring yet another card off the boarding deck with its own shadow card. So now we're up to four enemies plus the Raider flagship. If defending character is a ship, it's not. Alright, well we weather the attacks and now we've got some extra characters to attack back. Raider flagship isn't an option. So each of these Knights of the Swan are attacking for three, so six damage and then should be able to kill everything except the Raider flagship. As of right now I need three turns of questing to complete phase three and win the game. 
I owe four archery damage for the warship each round, but I got plenty of places to put it. Thanks to the three Onphalos herdsmen, I could take many rounds of four archery damage before running into a problem. Not 100% sure if the ships can take archery damage or not. I doubt there, eh, I kind of doubt if there's been a ruling about that. So we do the sailing check and we got another broken rudder, but we do pass the sailing check. I think that's the third broken rudder. So I'm going to quest for enough to make five progress. And it's a cunning pirate. Once again, another Umbar enemy that shouldn't have come out of the deck. Because it should have been in its own special discard pile. We'll see what the next card would have been when we deal the shadow cards. And it would have been scouting ship. No big deal. Still would have added an additional enemy and we would have had a, an undefended attack on the Narlenya or the Dream Chaser, but Plenty of damage to give there, got the healing objective in play, and a lot of characters available to retaliate with. But it is important to note, I think, for future reference, that the Umbar enemies should go to their special boarding deck discard pile. Which I do eventually realize before the end of the game. So, we're able to take out all the enemies with characters to spare for the broken rudder. Got additional characters to spare after that. Still need two more turns of questing to complete the quest. Uh, probably should be five more damage on Narlenya or something like that if that scouting ship had made an undefended attack. So I'm going to quest for enough to make five progress. There's a the scouting ship. Still have enough to defend another undefended attack even if I had put five damage on Narlenya. We're not really close to either of the ships dying. And it's at this point that I realize, oh, where did the boarding deck go? They should have gone to their own special discard pile. And so I go back and, and check what should have happened and where I went wrong. I read the boarding keyword and realize, oh, they should have gone to a, their own discard pile. So that putting them in the regular discard pile can be good if you don't get a ship. It can also be bad if you would have gotten a location because most of the, lo the locations are pretty mild and I'd rather get those than an enemy any day. But I'd rather get an enemy than a ship because the ships bring additional enemies usually. Though the one that would have come, the scouting ship, is pretty mild. So we reassemble the boarding deck as it should be. Should be 12 cards and we got 11 plus the one on the table. And now I'm going to go and check what the effects of the game, what the effects would have been on the game. And I come to the conclusion that the effects would have been pretty mild because of the... There I decide I will deal myself a random card or just to check and 
five attack enemy was roughly equivalent to the first Dunbar captain. And the second one would have been the scouting ship with five undefended damage, most likely on Dream Chaser, which had the damage to give. So now I still need one more card off the boarding deck. There was one boarding from the scouting ship and one from the raider flagship. And it's a sailor, southern sailor. Not too big a deal. So four attacks. Of course, it's easy for more to come, more enemies to come out of the deck with these shadow cards. So we've got nine damage on Naralenya. Should be an additional five on Dream Chaser as well. And we're getting close to the end here, so there requires just five more progress to be made. Should be the last sailing check, and we will pass with another broken rudder. That one I don't realize that it was a broken rudder, and I discard it, but no problem because this is the last turn. Host of Von Falas, that's not going to prevent me from winning. That will end the game. It's at this point that I realize that I forgot a lot of archery damage. So I'm going to place that now for my own edification. It's not going to matter at this point. All the characters will be a little banged up with wounds and arrows and so forth, but it's not going to kill anybody. So that will end what is a very long and difficult quest, though most of the difficulty is in the beginning with the introductory ships that start in the staging area. With the, with the ships that come out in the staging area as part of the setup and whatever you get in addition in the early part of the game can really be difficult to deal with. Got to get off to a strong start on this one. The Dream Chaser had 12 HP to give, so the objective was actually relatively important in winning the game. Being able to heal the ships did make a difference. I think I used it, I don't know, four or five turns, so one of the ships might have been hurting a bit, in theory, if I hadn't gotten that objective. So all in all, a very difficult quest. I did struggle with this one. And that will end this cycle, the Grey Haven's Dream Chaser cycle. I like these quests a lot. I highly recommend this cycle. And I still have six remaining Lord of the Rings Saga Nightmare quests. In addition to one more quest from this cycle. I was wrong about this ending this cycle. It doesn't. There's one more quest, the City of the Corsairs. And that will end this cycle. And then I have six Nightmare Lord of the Rings quests. So, thank you for watching.